of the really big uh, revolution in biology has been the discovery that most cancer patients seem to fall into a relatively small number of subtypes characterized by the equivalent sequences of mutations that characterize progression of those cancer expression pathways. So, for example, a large fraction of breast cancer that begins with the function of the gene P53, which can be employed the acquisition of chromosomes, which can lead to amplification of case of breast cancer or to a new gene. And this sub this progression pathway characterizes maybe 10 to 20 percent of breast cancer. And this is the only important observation because once you're able to identify significant fractions of patients with essentially the same molecular basis for you call therapeutics targeted to the specific disease molecular abnormalities rather than broad spectrum therapeutics rapidly divided in general. So this is known as targeted therapeutic the revolution for those patients for whom a targeted therapeutic is available. The Overton lecture this morning saw a dramatic example of that therapeutic RCA targeted at EGF receptor amplification, but there are many examples. Most patients, though, do not yet have a targeted therapeutic. And the reason is because it's not easy to identify the subtype, meaning similarities in the molecular basis, to find good diet who has a subtype, or to find the good drug targets that will lead to productive therapeutics. There's a lot of interest in understanding how it is that cancer evolve. What are the evolutionary pathways of cancer? And all cells of evolving under a second uh, study of cancer application of phylogenetic tumors essentially. Essentially, patient by looking files or look at gain or loss. Similar different tumors are the measuring distance. Maybe more closely related. Just look like and instead of treating population, population of cells. Taking advantage will typically have of that tumor that you get population rather than so that's some important information. Co-occur in individual, which is look at a lot of single days. You can look every day, maybe five expression of five things. Complementary motivated or present this get in the genome and the way purpose so taking the genome that each micro tumor in the data is actually a conflation 
collection of multiple events together. This is an approach first developed by the group of builders. Just this kind of method as a way of trying to separate contamination. C cells mixed in with the tumors from the tumor view of what the tumor would look like. But we want to take this if we actually construct distinct cell states from these tumors. Looking at mixed state, pure modes, and then explain terms of pure modes. And the way we propose to do this is by using an observation that unmixing can be represented as a problem in computational geometry. So if you have a couple of pure states, two pure cell types, based on expression levels of different genes. What Ehrlich and Foley said is that you represent any mixture of them, at least in principle, as a point of line segment lying between the two pure modes. So in principle, if you can find the line segment, you can infer that the pure modes are lying at approximately the ends of that line segment. And it works in higher dimension. If you have three pure modes, you'll get triangles. You find the triangle, you find the pure points. And in general, if you have k states, you expect to find a k vertex simplex embedded in k minus one dimensional space. And this observation suggested how to tumor phylogenetic getting in the right assays looking. And this is kind of an outline of the basic approach. We take some data set in a patient population, so expression or two geometry and then Drop it in form. We use print kind of the to be a pretty good mixing problem. We try to plot out the types of simplex for the states and this mixed fraction. The which is the so diagrams k of components would be the positions of three vertices, and the matrix F of mixture fractions would be something telling how much of each component appears to be in each data point. So here F would have a vector for this point, saying that it has a high fraction of this component, a low fraction of this component, and none of this component. We can then reconstruct the full matrix, so on this get a look if we could do the arrays on cell population and we did data and the difference is what the pure settings. Now every step of this this is kind of in, and what I really want to talk about today is just through the that we have a large set precisely in a so it makes a lot of sense to try and closes all of your data. And that's basically as an optimization problem to try to point as and explain to a way of solving press. And it actually works. This is a dimensional embed of lung tumor, different points. Uh, it would be a bit hard to say. If you get out of this, that there are actually a, a kind of a cap of points here, a kind of directly control cells embedded in the data and direction that seem to correspond to different classes of jobs. From one point, kind of above where the normal section, other things that seem to be about limits, it seems to make sense getting out here, and this, this approach does a decent job. But it does 
could see, I, I, and, and if you can see, and could do a better job with this the computer scene. I pull it down from here to here. Maybe pull this one up, pull this one back. He could do a much better job of into the simplex. And it's interesting that's the case. And the reason it's a computational sense of the simplex for it from pulling the speed is the fact that dealing with the yeah. So if we have a nice triangle like this, but you would just add in one point with a bit of noise to it, that can really dramatically perturb the simplex you end up fitting. So moving something a little bit out can skew the vertices quite a bit. So we felt that we need something that made more sense for noisy data. So th that approach is good low noise. We don't have huge amounts of data. And we don't disset. What we propose is what we call soft unmixing. And the, the idea of mixing is basically that we drop this hard constraint that every number x is a com convex combination of components, combination of the component matrix times some fraction of each component, turn this into an error term. So if you have a point in plex, you can exactly say that xi is equal to some kf error term would be zero. But if you have points outside the simplex, you'll get for this. So that gives us a way of dealing with simplex fitting, where we have the same as a kind prior, but also be tolerant to the fact that data one noise. This does introduce a couple of new nuisances. We have this term, which is really a norm by which we measure noise. It turns out when you look at data, the one norm here, so it doesn't penalize things simplex, which more things slightly far. And we have this regularization. <laughs> way to put the prior versus the error term. This strong setting, but we use the intuition that we want to so we try to think out the balances these two terms. This is a much hard problem to solve for it is solvable in practice. So it's a, a very chain simplex every time a point has an error out of it. You have a value of the function for any given simplex. So the problem of finding the best fit mixture fractions f for k. I'm going to evaluate this well and be a that stand job of it. We ended most recently just using a way of evaluating the objective. The bottom is that this leads to a huge improvement in method relative to the hard on mixing. Data sets where we can create mixtures of two. We can infer what the components are, so how much of For the hard on it has in the inferences. From this figure is much less the data seem to and of course we want to data sets. They looked at multiple sets per patient. It's pre processing six principal out from it. Showing different mixing, smaller texture and the hard on mixing. Four components to fit to the data set. And the important point here is we've done mixing. It's obviously a much tighter fit to the data. It seems to be 
we don't hear jumping and it gives us a way of going to set and see what we hope is the cellular level. So this is a very zoomed out view, six components for the data set. This is just an average of all the raw data. And what each of these pieces, yeah, I'll go up a bit in a second, but each, each of these genomic access, access chromosomes and the copy them. So you can kind of find some books in some of these. And if I blow what we see is what the data looks like mixed in. So we've separated out some of the major components in this data set. And what highlighted here are two components that seem to show something that we hope are our components. These are HER2 new amplifying subsets of the breast cancer tumors. We get two HER2 new amplifying components. It's completely clean out components. And this is HER2 new amplification in two different genetics. One of these is all showing sick amplification, something we expect to do for CEA and various other markers. And what we think this is suggests how you might interpret the kinds of things in a phylogenetic sense. So we might say that this is showing two different states we see in advanced tumor and both evolve to be a common state with HER2 new amplification, but divergent, some going on seeing abnormalities of the late state is going on to another set of abnormalities. So it's the kind of thing we hope to get out of data. And there are various other tests I don't have time to tell you about in great detail for markers we, we would find in the data that are shown in yellow here. The four, 13 and 14 of these we're able to find in our data set looking at marker, this important marker progression, as well as various other tests that this is working. It does seem to do very well in the lot that Hard mixing. Just a comparison, this is showing a couple of equivalent the hard mixing. And what you should be able to see is there's a lot more noise here to allow these nice peaks, which are really what we need to see in the data set. And then get in here, you can refer to the paper if you really want to know more. The mixer fraction also gives various ways of validating this. This is all one of the nice features of their data set is they multiple groups of colors, different tumor sections, so there are tumors to pull out specific cells. I reproduce in each tumor, pulling out single components or sometimes pairs. And we, in other ways, get a lot of inferred from tumor data about which are the tumors. So when you refer to the papers, if you want to mention this, telling us that it seems to be doing something reasonable because we don't actually know the truth in real data and giving us information. This is exactly in these cancer data sets. So the purpose of this talk is to tell you about the unmixing step, although the purpose is file just briefly put up a picture of a phylogeny each time to tell you about show how you can group these different components. Phylogenetics, maybe what some of the ancestral states look like, as well as the mutation and see characterized progression into these components. And once more, Darius Dumaini will be presenting a poster phylogenetics as part of this project that, that you can look up. Levi, so I just wanted to say that there are lots of other to go each of step of this diagram. And there are lots of little invitational problems. And I'll just close by acknowledging those who really did the most work. So this large work, David Tilfer, research scientist, my group, and his national stories remain. Students in my group, on copy expert. And thanks also to NCI, and thanks to all of you for your.
So, so very great talk prior constructing this mixing matrix. Um, um, noise model to deal with liars. Other prior, I mean, you could talk about the analysis prior. Spot-wise, prior is prior comes out, out of this notion being a, a simple limit of depth and sampling of and so in that sense, intuitively as As a prior, we're looking at some other prior in terms of the genetics of the geometric structure you get, and the intuition behind that choice. Two questions one computational one by method out there. ICA and like those others to, to give us advantages and disadvantages. The signals that you saw those markers that weren't previously known. To look at some of these other methods, we did it and it's because we don't digest it by a review. To the papers before worse, I believe. Functionality reduction technique to expression data, but it's really good idea. We're trying, I can't tell you. Anything. We also have some work there on the best statistical test. To pull the in things that are the top hits are things known as breast something that yet we found anything that was a known markers of breast cancer. Or some plexus. Than just a normal color. Isn't your driven by our will be to be on the conference? Well, simplicity is simplified quite a bit noise is an issue. The fine calls about hard find the closing simplex. Maybe finding. The simplex is its really intrinsic mention problem we run into in the hard on missing the outlets, which is why we need to go to a I know the outliers knew the boundaries is what you Well, the outliers is that vertices are made. To pull in a direction, but at least in terms of the outlier, the outlier. correction. As you see, the quiet are the end situation. The range from several subtypes and just the balance. You feel like a computation result. Well, we're listing the data available. We're not going to be able to pull out some tumors. So we're really looking at how we had a hundred different lineages that would seem that. 
there are some well and well represented, and that some of the pieces can be considered. It isn't an obvious problem, which is to look at the eigenvalue in that. That's where you cut it off and you stand above that point. In the information criterion, the results haven't been. Yeah, I have a quick question. Um, on expression data, how do you know a mixture of different populations of cells is a, a pathway, for example, in all cells of different tumors from different tumor cells? But it, uh, subpopulations, but, but they're all just different pathways. Or... Yeah, that's different levels of gene. Our work is modules, and then if you go down the mixture and out the different amounts of that. But part of the problem is that's a modulation there. It's part of it might be better way of dealing with moving out some of those changes slightly different genetic backgrounds. 